This is the second of two videos on functional dyspepsia and we'll discuss management. Let's now discuss the management of functional dyspepsia. Small and frequent meals as overeating may make symptoms worse. Avoid fatty foods as it delays stomach emptying. Avoid spicy foods and acidic foods like citrus fruits and juices and tomatoes. Avoid caffeine containing foods like coffee, tea and chocolates, gassy drinks and milk if it causes or aggravates the symptoms. There is no hard and fast rules as to which food irritates the stomach. So avoid any other food that makes symptoms worse. Avoid alcohol. Reduce weight if overweight as obesity may worsen symptoms. And finally, avoid any drugs that may cause dyspepsia or similar symptoms. Let's now discuss about the specific management. Initial management could include investigating for the bacteria Helicobacter pylori. This bacteria causes chronic infection of the stomach. There are many ways to test for this bacteria. A commonly used test is called the urea breath test. Another is taking a piece of stomach tissue called a biopsy during gastroscopy. A positive test means that the bacteria is present in the stomach. If so, a course of medications to treat the Helicobacter pylori is given to clear the bacteria from the stomach. The medicines given include two antibiotics and an acid suppressing drug called a PPI for one to two weeks. Some patients have a permanent cure once the bacteria is cleared. Please visit a video on Helicobacter pylori for a more detailed explanation. If Helicobacter pylori was positive and the patient did not improve after the bacteria was cleared. The next step is to give drugs to suppress stomach acid called proton pump inhibitors or PPIs. They are given for between 4 to 8 weeks. Some patients feel a lot better with these drugs. Relationship between functional dyspepsia and hyperacidity is not clear, but some patients improve after these drugs. Most patients with functional dyspepsia have normal acidity, but somehow these drugs called PPIs seem to improve symptoms. If the patient does not improve, then the medicines are stopped. If patient improves after PPI, then long-term treatment with PPI may be necessary. However, these drugs need to be stopped every six months or so in view of side effects. Instead of PPIs, some doctors might try another group of drugs that suppress stomach acidity called histamine 2 receptor antagonists or H2RA. An example is ranitidine. Another group of drugs that may relieve symptoms are drugs that increase stomach emptying. These are called prokinetic drugs. Examples include domperidone and etopride. These drugs are tried for about 4 weeks and stopped if there is no improvement. Domperidone is used cautiously because of side effects on the heart. If the patient does not improve after a trial of these medicines, the next step is a trial of antidepressants like amitriptyline starting at a dose of 10 mg once a day. An alternative antidepressant is miltazepine or remeron. These drugs need to be taken for 2-3 to three months before they are effective. Antidepressant medications are given at a lower dose than those used in depression. These drugs may work through the gut-brain axis. 
Some patients may respond to an anti-anxiety medicine called Pusipron. Finally, there is psychotherapy for patients who do not respond to the above measures. These include cognitive behavior therapy, hypnotherapy, and relaxation therapy. Herbal treatment. It appears that the following herbs might help in functional dyspepsia. This includes STW5, Iberogat, which is a blend of nine herbs including peppermint, caraway, chamomile, licorice, and milk thistle. Another is peppermint oil and terry-coated with caraway oil. Then there is a Japanese herbal medicine which is predominantly used in Japan called Rikushinto Kempo. Some emerging treatment that has been tried but is still inconclusive includes acupuncture, red pepper powder or capsaicin, and dried banana powder includes Indian gooseberry or amla and turmeric or curcumin. Let's now summarize the management of functional dyspepsia in a flowchart manner. The doctor, after assessment, will proceed to investigations. The doctor might order a urea bread test or UBT alone to look for Helicobacter pylori or combine the UBT with blood test and an ultrasound or combine a blood test, ultrasound and gastroscopy. This will depend on the age of the patient as well as whether the patient has symptoms suggestive of a more serious condition. If the Helicobacter pylori is positive, the next step is to treat with antibiotics. If the bacteria is cleared and patient improves, it is good news. If the patient does not improve, the next step is to give a 4 to 8 weeks course of drugs called PPIs. If the patient doesn't have H. pylori, similarly, a 4 to 8 weeks course of PPIs are given. If the patient feels better, the PPIs are continued. If patient does not improve with PPIs, then prokinetic drugs can be tried. If the patient is still no better, then gastroscopy or any other investigation that was not done earlier is now carried out. If these investigations are normal, as is expected in functional dyspepsia, the next step is to try antidepressants like amitriptyline or anti-anxiety drugs or if indicated to refer patient for psychotherapy. Sometimes prokinetic drugs could be started earlier particularly if the main complaint is fullness after having meals.